Buenos días. Vamos a dar comienzo a la. Very good morning. We're going to start the morning session of our second day. And today we're going to talk about the importance of culture in the European integration process, from institutional process to action in the cultural and civil society sectors. It's going to be a short, a small change. First, Rafael López Guzmán is going to be speaking. He's here with us. Uh, he's professor of um, history of art in Granada. He's director of department in Granada as well. He's president of the Spanish Committee of Hi Art Historians, and he was just appointed. He's member of the uh, commission of the education ministry to promote uh, the training and research in social, legal, and humanity sciences. He coordinated a master's and he specialized in the Islamic world, in um, Ibero-American art and Muslim art. He wrote a book that has been uh, very famous on Muslim uh, law, published by Cathedra, and it's on the third uh, edition. So he very well knows different um, fields of specialization, and um, thanks to his research, um, he has studied both the Muslim world and the Latin American world. Uh, he has been invited to speak and to do training in different European and uh, Latin America universities. And he has also uh, been curator and coordinator of different exhibitions. For instance, um, The Power of Alhambra, um, Art and Culture of Al-Andalus, that was uh, done two years ago. It's a privilege and an honor to have here Professor Rope López Guzmán here with us. Um, he's, you will see um, that he's an expert in uh, culture and heritage. He has coordinated different masters with regard to um, this uh, field. So without further ado, he's going to be talking about European heritage level. Uh, he's going to reflect on some Spanish examples. Thank you and a very good morning. Of course, I have to start by thanking the organizers of this Youth Day campus. Thank you, Miguel Angel and uh, Pilar, the coordinators of the course, for inviting me, because speaking in this framework of Charles V is a real honor. I told my friends that this is the first time I come to Yuste, which I know is an unforgivable mistake in my life. And I came uh, from Cuacos de Yuste to here by foot because I had to do a short pilgrimage before uh, the figure of Charles V, which was a very important and essential uh, figure in the story and the history of Spain and Europe, which is what gathers us. Um, here today. I'm going to be talking about the EU heritage label and I'm going to focus uh, on a written text so it will be easier for simultaneous interpreting so that you can all understand this basic structure on the heritage label and afterwards during the debate we'll be um, able to talk and discuss it further because I think it is a very controversial topic interesting but controversial and it deserves us to think about what is the Council of Europe doing and what is Europe doing with regard to the heritage label. As I said, the European Union, which is the topic that has gathered all of us here, has focused um, the knowledge um, of the heritage and one of the fundamental lines as argument for European consolidation as an identity trade. Both the EU and the Council of Europe have um, added multiple initiatives like heritage days, um, 
different types of artists, definition of itinerary routes, denomination of cultural capitals, the uh, awards Europa Nostra and intercultural cities. We've discussed this uh, during these seminars and I'm going to be talking about the EU heritage label today. The EU heritage label Excuse me, I'm just going to show you the image. It's an action very recent by the European Union that started as an intergovernmental uh, proposal. At present, it is open to all member states that wish to participate and it tries to um, Make it make us believe in the EU motto united in diversity. It tries to reinforce the support of Europeans to this joint identity and to foster the sense of belonging in a common cultural space by fostering also cooperation among EU member states. It is also a medium to protect and to promote our cultural heritage so that, that we can identify and we can leave this heritage to future generations. So it increases knowledge on one hand, and on the other, it makes citizenship to back uh, the knowledge and value of its um, heritage. The specific rule on the EU heritage level was passed by the EU Parliament in 2011. It was as a complementary initiative, non-exclusive of previous ones, such as uh, cultural itineraries or the World Heritage by UNESCO. So it has a double uh, goal. On the one hand, it should consolidate EU identity by reinforcing the sense of belonging to e the European Union. And second, it wants to promote democratic coexistence and intercultural dialogue. According to the existing rules, uh, EU heritage label can be opted by uh, underwater archaeological sites, natural sites, industrial or urban sites, memory sites, cultural uh, settings, contemporary heritage or um, others as long as they have been linked to a f place that has uh, had a fundamental uh, role to play in EU. It has three categories. First of all, unique sites, which is a general category, is the broader and more regular one. There are specific places in one member state. They are self-managed, but they must permanently cooperate in the network of EU heritage label. Second, we have uh, cross or transnational sites that include the possibility of several sites in different member states to be linked but under the same umbrella uh, denomination or name because they are linked somehow. They are independently uh, managed but there has to be a certain network um, together and one state must manage them all as coordinator. And then we have national um, sites several sites in one state with the same uh, topic or and so they have the same name but one of the sites manages the rest of the community of these uh, common sites. Regardless of the category of the site, they all fulfill the same criteria. They all have to uh, be uh, assessed periodically by international experts. Evaluation criteria to request the EU heritage label are the following. First of all, the site needs to be uh, symbolic for Europe. It has to be important for Europe. As I said, the site must have had an important role played in the history of Europe in its cultural development or in the EU integration process. Without that, it cannot belong to the EU Heritage Label Network. Second, the project that goes with the um, application must um, have some general goals. First of all, it must, this further later on, 
It also has to facilitate access and understanding to publics from other places and other languages. And last but not least, it has to be integrated actively in the network of EU heritage label networks to guarantee visibility at European scale. Of course, with these goals in mind, the application has to include a work plan. That is, what is going to be done at that place to uh, raise awareness of Europe needs to have very specific activities that take into account the management of the site, its preservation, visit, uh, visitors' reception, access of public, focusing on the youth population, making sure that the site is a sustainable touristy destination that respects or that is uh, environmentally friendly and having a good communication plan. So if this symbolic a site has a good working plan, then you can apply for an EU heritage label. How do you um, request this EU heritage label? All sorts of sites can do it, foundation, organization, association, that among its goals and activities, they want to protect and disseminate cultural heritage. Um, applications can be from a national level or transnational and cross-national level with different member states with uh, common goals. Not only EU member states can request the EU heritage label, but the rest of European states can do that. Administrative process starts at uh, the closest territorial political level. For instance, in Spain, it has to be um, applied at autonomous level. And if so, they request Madrid, um, and then it goes on to the European level, where some international experts that gather once a year grant or not the EU heritage label to the site. This international committee gathers at least once a year, and according to the criteria we just mentioned, approve or reject the inclusion of EU heritage label. Once uh, the heritage label is um, given, both states and the EU Commission, they need to make sure that all uh, goals are achieved and that the work plan is um, fulfilled. This is a certain um, control that is carrying out twice or three times a year where an international group of experts assess whether this site fulfills the legal regulation or if not, it can be uh, eliminated from the EU heritage label list. Originally, the idea of the EU heritage label was not a general EU idea, it was actually an intergovernmental initiative. I'd like to give you some um, dates. For instance, in the year 2005, the French culture ministry suggested in Paris the idea of the EU heritage label, and Spain uh, jumped on that train very fast. And it was Spain, in fact, that promoted the idea of the heritage label. In the year 2006, in Granada, an agreement was signed on what would be the criteria for the heritage label that received the backing of Hungary. So French, uh, sorry, uh, France, Spain, and Hungary were the first to support the creation of the EU heritage label. In the year 2007, at a meeting that uh, took place at the Cluny Abbey, the first EU heritage labels were granted. In Spain, there were four. Uh, Fisterre or Finisterre Cape was given, the Royal Monastery of Euste, the Archive of the Crown of Aragon, and the Residencia de Estudiantes, uh, the student's residence in Madrid. Another meeting that took place in Cáceres in the year 2010 set as main goal to bring in closer the European heritage to citizenship, mostly to the youngest, with a didactical 
um, nature so that we could transmit <coughs> pan-European values to future generations. I think it was very interesting the fact that this was done here in Houston. We had to uh, bring um, the European heritage closer to the whole citizenship, but the focus was placed on the youngest. In the year 2008, the Council of Europe uh, got this initiative under its organization in the year 2011. It was an intergovernmental project uh, of the European Union. Up until then, 64 European sites received the EU heritage label, but in the year 2011, in 11, sorry, when the Council of Europe um, got in charge of the heritage label, we redesigned the criteria and they started from scratch. The 64 sites um, had the labels, but the general uh, EU heritage label started from the beginning once again. Currently, we have a series of labels that began in the year 2014 where the new labels were granted. That is the intergovernmental uh, labels that we have here in Spain. Uh, we had four and then uh, two of them um, didn't have them. So they started from scratch and in 2014 only four places for sites received it. The Westerberg uh, camp in Holland, which was an internment center for Jews that were transferred later to Poland. It was open uh, during the Second World War and the diaries of Anna Frank were uh, drafted there. The Palace of the Peace in The Hague, which is the headquarters of the ICC, a big part of the International Court of Justice. Uh, a series of institutions uh, of legal nature uh, have been lodged there and now it has one of the biggest libraries in international law. Carnutum in Austria, which is a Roman town, one of the best preserved uh, cities uh, in the north limits of the uh, Roman Empire together to the Danube. Then the headquarters of the Guild of Tallinn in Estonia uh, built in 1410 uh, and it was part of the German Hansa which was one of the biggest uh, commercial organizations in the Middle Ages. It played an important role in the history of uh, trade exchanges and cultural exchanges in the North, uh, Northern Europe in the Middle Ages. This received in 2014 the uh, label the European label. In 2015, 16 sites received that uh, um, label. The Cluny Abbey in France, it was a recognition of that as a spiritual and administrative uh, place as one of the biggest monastery uh, networks in the history of Europe. The General Library of the University of Coimbra in Portugal with more than 500 years, with exceptional books for the history of Europe and a sp a special uh, architecture. The House and Museum of uh, uh, Alcide de Gasperi, uh, the birthplace of uh, this important politician, who was one of the biggest names in founding fathers, like Robert Schumann, Monet, and, Ad and Adenauer. The Constitution of the 3rd of May of 1791 in Poland, when the Parliament of Lithuania and Poland drew the first de democratic constitution, uh, the, f the first in Europe and the second in the world after the one of the US, the Partisans Hospital in Francia, Slovenia, uh, old wooden uh, buildings and a hospital where uh, wounded people from both sides were uh, helped and, um, and uh, healed. The sites of peace of Westphalia, 1648 in Germany, apart from putting an end to different uh, wars in those days, is key for the modern history of Europe because in this peace there was an agreement through diplomatic negotiations uh, the end of a conflict 
tolerance of religion was accepted as a basis of international relations and the right of sovereignty for peripheric uh, states were also guaranteed. The uh, label is also given to the document of abolition of the death penalty in Portugal, which was enacted in 1852 for political uh, crimes and in 1867 for uh, civil um, crimes. It is located in the Tower of Tombo in Lisbon. The shipyards, shipyards in Dansk in Poland is the place where the uh, Solidarność um, Union was um, born and it was on the basis of the end of the Cold War and of the following um, history of Europe. The house of Robert Schumann is uh, the house of one of the founding fathers of Europe and there is a center of research and of administration related to the issue of the European Union and its uh, projection. The castle of Hambach in Germany as a symbol of the search for democracy in a trans-border context is considered as the cradle of the German democracy. Of course, the heart of ancient Athens with a monumental group, the uh, uh, old Agora, the Acropolis, the uh, Hadrian's uh, library is a compound where important buildings uh, happen, which were essential for the development of Europe. The classical art, theater, democracy, e equality of uh, rights and science. The city of Kaunas in Lithuania, one of the main ports in the area, particularly in the interwar periods between 1920 and 1939, it became the capital of uh, Lithuania and with a great architectonic or architectural development as well as the entry of uh, progressive uh, European currents. In 2015, it's also given to the pan-European uh, picnic um, park in Sopron, Hungary, which happened in 1989, where the border was open and a flux of Germans from the uh, German Democratic Republic started entering Hungary. So the picnic in the border in the uh, Iron Curtain countries was a way to break the border and to penetrate from one side to the other, breaking that isolation of those countries belonging to the Iron Curtain. So it is a symbol of the Europe uh, without borders. And lastly, the Union of Lublin in Poland, which is the pact uh, signed in 1569, which uh, sealed the uh, constitutional union of the Kingdom of Poland and the great uh, duchy of Lithuania. One free republic, one uh, parliament, a chosen or elected king, a currency and tolerance of ethnic and religious um, issues. From that, the, the residence of the students and the uh, archive of the Crown of Aragon were added later. In 2016, the last time when this uh, label has been given, nine uh, sites received it. The Neanderthal site of Krapina in Croatia, more than 800 fossils from Neanderthal people since it was uh, uh, found at the, at the end of the 19th century. It has a museum as well. Secondly, the Kaslan uh, muse, Museum of the Archdiocese of Olomchuk uh, in Czech Republic is a key element of the Moravians in the history of Europe. It has many centuries behind it, and it has a high number of uh, heritage goods that speak of the richness of this place. The fortress of Sagres in Portugal, which was the headquarters of the Prince Henry the Sailor for its expansion maritime um, projects in the end of the 15th century, which was very important for the age of discovery, which uh, disseminated culture, uh, exploration, and trade from Europe, both in the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, giving uh, the European civilization a global projection, which is something that has defined the modern world. Fourth, the Imperial Palace of Vienna, which is a complex of buildings and gardens which unify the residence of the Habsburgs, a family that governed for almost 700 years, 
in different countries of Europe, including Spain. That Habsburg Empire, which was multi-ethnic and multi-confessional, had a great impact in the political, administrative, economic, and social uh, fields in, the, in its territories. The historical compound of the University of Tartu in Estonia, uh, designed at the beginning of the 19th century, which uh, em embodies the uh, ideas of enlightenment, uh, joining science with uh, knowledge, and the entry of progressive ideas in the European University. Sixth, the uh, Music Academy France List in Budapest, created in 1875 by the composer and musician. It includes uh, an international University of Musical Arts and, and a hall for performances. It uh, preserves music uh, heritage and it also brings uh, the creativity and innovation with a European and international character. Then the Mundaneum of Mons in Belgium, which is an intellectual reference in Europe. The idea was to create uh, or, or advocate for peace through the exchange of knowledge, through mm, bibliographic research. The objective of Mundaneum was collecting all the information available in the world, irrespective of, of its support or medium, books, mm, postcards, papers, etc., and classified. The uh, universal decimal classification was originated there, which is the one that mm, rules most of the libraries in the world. Eighth, the cemetery one, two, three of the Oriental Front of the First World War in Poland, which was one uh, of the stages of the one of the biggest battles in the First World War, where the three force uh, armed forces uh, confronted Austro-Hungarian, uh, Germans, and Russians. is is a post-mortem uh, meeting point of different linguistic and uh, religious cultures. And then the European district in Strasbourg in France, since its creation after the Second World War, that district has been the headquarters of the Council of Europe, of the European uh, Court of Human Rights and the Parliament, the European Parliament. So it symbolizes, symbolizes the European integration, defense of human rights, democracy and the, and the rule of law. We have discussed the 27 um, sites and we need to add the two Spanish sites, which is the archive of the Crown of Aragon in Barcelona and the Residencia Estudiantes or Students Residence in Madrid, because the other two, suggested in 2007, when the label was an intergovernmental initiative, the Cape of Finisterre and the Ministry of Jews to have been excluded. At present, we only have two sites. The student's residence in Madrid was created in 1910 and until 1936, when it was closed because of the Spanish Civil War, was the first Spanish cultural center and one of the most fruitful uh, creation and scientific and artistic exchange experience in Europe in the uh, interwar period. There, um, lived or visited very important uh, people like Juan Ramón Jiménez, Miguel de Unamuno, José Ortega Gasset, José Morel Villa, Eugenio Dors, Federico García Lorca, Luis Buñuel, Severo Ochoa, Salvador Dalí, Rafael Alberti, or Pedro Salinas. There were conferences and conferen uh, conference where um, foreigners were invited. For instance, Einstein, Keynes, Gropius, Marie Curie, Stravinsky, Henri uh, Bergson, Calder, Paul Valerio, Max, Jacob, just a few examples of people who brought new ideas from the philosophical, aesthetic, or scientific point of view. The residence was a forum for debate and um, new ideas that came from Europe. In 1986, the residents got back part of their original goals by working first as a site uh, for remembrance to recuperate its historical legacy focused on that time that was known in Spain as the Silver Age. And the second wall goal was a meeting point for new scientific uh, discoveries. It is a residence hall, so many researcher, um, artists, and professionals can live together in that privileged space. And many of us, we have stayed there 
at uh, one point or another. And then the other Spanish site that has received the EU heritage label is the archive for the crown of uh, Aragon, is the um, archive, the oldest archive alive in Europe. There, there are many documents uh, regarding the territories that made up the uh, kingdom of Aragon, Catalonia, Valencia, Mallorca, Rosellon, um, Sicily, Naples, etc. The files that have that are the archives um, document the international relationships maintained by the king and queen of Aragon among many countries in the world in the Middle Ages from the 13th and 16th century. Up until 1993, it was located in the Palace of Loctinet of the Viceroy. Uh, palace, and in 1993, a new uh, headquarter was built in the street of Almogavares in Barcelona. But now it has two um, buildings. The historical building is the palace as a protocol area, and the new research area is um, also there. Parallelly, there are many activities that disseminate important documents for the history of Europe. But as I said, these two sites received the label in 2007. But up until then, we had two very important sites that, from my personal point of view, should have uh, kept it, their label. First, the Cape of Fisterra or Finisterre, which is located in uh, Fisterra, which is in northwest of Spain, which is a part of the territory that goes inside the sea as a small peninsula. It is especially significant, this cape, it's, uh, that it's located uh, geographically because all you can see from there is uh, the sea because um, from the antiquity it was known as the Finisterrae or the end of the known world, uh, the most western point of the Roman Empire of the old Europe. For centuries it was a nautical reference and everybody had to go through it and then it has also a far. With the uh, development of the uh, devotion to San Jacques or Santiago and the pilgrimage to Compostela made it the last um, stage of the walk towards Santiago. So it was the symbol of the end of the known world and the beginning of the uh, world beyond. For me, it has a very important pan-European symbolism. And so this is an important, very important setting so that we can locate where the European territory uh, begins and ends. And that is why I think it should be included in the EU heritage label, because it fulfills the criteria, the reasoning, and the goals of this label. And the other site was the Royal Monastery of Saint Jerome of Euste. I'm not going to talk to you today about the history of this uh, monastery because many of you know it better. But I'd just like to remember its important and very wealthy uh, heritage that is preserved here and its um, function as witness of fundamental um, moments in the history of Spain and Europe. It's European idea uh, when the Emperor Charles V was here uh, cannot be denied, but it's also a reality at present. But we also have to take into account the management done by the Order of uh, Saint Jerome uh, with the friars. And um, this has been fundamental to set basic concepts in the definition of Europe since the Middle Ages. At the same time, the friars, they preserved the culture and they transmitted knowledge that we uh, have at present. A third positive element of this monastery is uh, the location here of the European Academy of Euste that has fostered and relaunched the cultural Europe, the social Europe, the identity and diversity contemporary contemporary Europe through its um, activities and the Charles V European Award. I think we could say that you see an Emperor Charles V in Europe. Um, they uh, summary to perfect they summarize to perfection what happened in the continent through history. Then there is another important uh, symbol that was uh, the coining of the first ECU coins. 
and there you have the face of Charles V as a symbol of a united Europe. There is another example of the imperial uh, politics and how it was important for Europe. We can see uh, the coat of arms that is kept uh, in Madrid, where Charles V is in a boat with the allegories of victory and fame. Uh, he seems as a Roman emperor with the imperial coat of arms and uh, the uh, plus ultra uh, sentence. On his side, Hercules has his famous columns to the other side of the world uh, in an empire where the sun never set, as his son uh, Philip II used to say. You need to know that uh, Hercules uh, he is uh, marking the end of the world and as a new Hercules, Charles V, he tried to go beyond towards uh, America, Asia through the western route, so the symbol is clearly there. By bringing together the two locations that do not have the label any longer, Finisterre and Juste, I believe that these are fundamental symbols in Europe. The first set the setting of the end of the known world in the 16th century, and the second one uh, highlighting the figure of Charles V, um, extending the knowledge of the world to the end, to the whole world. What's more, this knowledge of the world by, discover, by the discovery of America was a radical change in Europe, not because of the wealth of uh, precious metal that built palaces and supported wars. The authentic revolution for Europe of the knowledge of the new world was the incorporation of new uh, products like tomato, uh, corn, potatoes, beans, peppers, cocoa, pineapple, and avocado. This ended the uh, hunger that we had in Europe, and they developed uh, the economy and the demography that made Europe uh, get into modern ages. This all began by the political project of Emperor Charles V, who knew of the importance of the territories beyond the sea as a whole, even though they did not know much about uh, the geography of the world at that point. So I believe there is no reason not to include Juste in the EU heritage label, because I think it's one of the most representative sites uh, within the criteria set by the European Union. Besides um, these, I'd like to briefly conclude by talking about the different denominations, recognition or inclusion, the different networks of EU heritage labels at world level even. Because sometimes it's a real rat race um, where we try to get the medal by um, they, they want the medal instead of really management, the management of these goods because all politicians want their own medals for their own um, heritage, but the posterior management uh, is not done. At present, for instance, we have the uh, European network of intercultural cities. They have the same name in Spanish as the intelligent city Spanish network. So the citizenship do not the citizens do not quite understand what everything means. We all know what is the political pressure um, that suffers UNESCO to recognize many places as uh, world heritage because we all want our legacy to be better than our neighbors. With regard to this EU heritage label, on the meeting celebrated, uh, held on the 24th of June 2009, we tried to establish a representative number of sites per member state. That is, we tried to set repre political representativeness and not pan-European. Is it more important for sites to have symbolic value regardless of the member state that they belong to? At the same time, on the 10th of June 2009, in Brussels, we discuss on an open meeting what this, this topic added uh, with regard to already existing laws from the point of view of Europe and international level. The um, answer was very vague. Uh, 
uh, but they focus on awareness raising on young population. I believe that all European initiatives with different uh, models and levels that have a basic goal of uh, protecting heritage, they are very useful, but at times there are too many categories and a constant struggle and fight between and among politicians to uh, get the medal. And so this makes it sometimes impossible to correctly manage cultural heritage sites. My final proposal comes hand in hand with the need to deepen the idea of the Europe of citizens. I think that political administrations should be less important and we should foster citizen-based initiatives from non-governmental institutions that can directly deal with the European Heritage Council. They should have enough economic funds to support their proposals without uh, the public administrations so that there would be no struggle of false power between member states. I think that universities have an important role to play through their research groups. They have human resources, uh, research and management uh, capability, as well as educational repercussion. That is, they focus more on the scientific basis and not political opportunistic uh, people. I believe that having universities and research groups as generating uh, basis of proposals would be a very important initiative that would have a positive repercussion on the EU uh, heritage label so that we can transmit uh, future generation of these values. And I would like to finish with a suggestive uh, Im uh, image. You can see here the Posidonia Oceanica. Um, from my research group at the University of Granada, we are uh, fostering a project uh, within the uh, European initiative Horizon 2020, and we want to include in this EU heritage label the uh, Oceanic Posidonia that is inside the natural park of Cesalinas between Ibiza and Formentera, which is uh, recognized by the UNESCO in 1999. We believe that this could be recognized uh, by the EU heritage label because at present there is no natural uh, site uh, recognized, even though it is included on the definition of the EU. I think it is obvious why, because this site has helped the coastal and geomaritime um, setting of uh, Europe. Without this image that you can see the Posidonia, there would be no Europe as we know it, because I think from a environmental point of view and visual impact point of view, it sets Europe the way we know it now. I believe that this has been essential for Europe and it also has an important visual impact to raise awareness among European young people in order to also raise awareness on the need to define touristic sustainability to uh, make sure that it is preserved. Maybe uh, we can talk later as ports as doors for culture. And I hope that you all support us in this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lopez Guzman. The debate is already initiated by the questions he has posed. So you have the floor do you want to ask any questions or comments i want only to refresh the reasons why Euster was ex excluded. Why was it excluded?
Sí. Bien. Eh, hasta donde yo llego, mi corazón. As far as I know, because these are documents which are not uh, fully accessible, is referred to the uh, work plan, which is not uh, uh, in line with the generic criteria. However, in the foundation, perhaps they know a little more. I think it is uh, an, uh, it's outrageous, <coughs> because if we see the hundred and odd uh, sites that were declared plus the 29 now, there is a great difference because there has been uh, the prevalence of uh, spaces in the eastern countries with symbolic values which are quite relative for the whole of Europe and others have been marginalized which were probably uh, weightier in the sense that it was France and Spain, the ones that started the intergovernmental project. The Western countries, which are the most representatives on regarding the concept of Europe, are quantitative, quantitatively more marginalized compared with those in Central Europe. But the reasons I've been given when I have made the consultation is because it doesn't adapt the work plan to the goals and criteria of the European heritage label. What I have clear in my mind is that there are many reasons, more than sufficient reasons, even symbolic ones, for USTE, together with Finisterre, uh, to become uh, uh, sites of the European heritage um, label, even above the Crown of Aragon archive or uh, the uh, other one from uh, Spain, without uh, doubting uh, the, 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 the importance of them. I uh, wish to say something because of the, we have been alluded uh, in, in used to here. I, I agree that we uh, deserve uh, that seal because we were one of the first sites that were considered as sites of heritage, of European heritage, partly because of the symbolic um, meaning of this place linked to Charles V, which you have explained very well, and also because of the work and contents of our uh, activities in the foundation. One of the requisites is that they shouldn't be places that may have been quite important for the memory of Europe, but that they have to be and kept alive. And this is one of those. We are one of the first uh, sites to get that recognition. And the ceremony in 2007, uh, when we received the uh, recognition, took place here, but in those days it was intergovernmental. I arrived a bit late, and I don't know if you spoke about this. The European Union took this initiative made by several countries uh, and took it in its hands, but then they started with different requisites. We haven't been uh, removed from the uh, recognition. The title, the intergovernmental, is there. And it is permanent. I mean, the, the symbol is there at the entrance of the monastery, saying that we are a memory, a place of memory, according to the intergovernmental procedure. The new requisite is that the one that has to ask for the heritage label is the owner of the place. And he, now it is national heritage, which up until now had other priorities. And this has been a bit uh, uh, understudy or in uh, standby. And now we are in conversations because the one that has to apply officially for it and justify the reasons of fulfillment of those criteria is national heritage, but there are certain circumstances. Heritage uh, manages the 
building, so to say, and it has also some cultural activities, but the uh, use of the citizens' uh, memory and the citizens' activity depends on the foundation and not on national heritage. So we are trying to see the formula that could be valid to apply for the label. So I clear this. The label, intergovernmental label is there, but we haven't submitted yet the new announcement because we first need to have a solid uh, application that uh, makes us uh, eligible for that. We are working with National Heritage in this line, and we hope that if not in the next, in the following one, we can present a project that uh, might guarantee the um, uh, recognition with that seal or with that label. Thank you. I wish to say something on this topic. The labels of 2007 are still valid. The question is that not all should go through the political administration, but that there have to be an initiatives that emanate from the guarantors of this institution, for in this case, USTE, to the European uh, institutions. Administrative and political institutions are really overwhelmed. If we go to the ministry page where the national labels are um, considered, it is so obsolete, the page, that the current, this year, labels have not been considered there. If there were a web uh, link to the Council of Europe page that would uh, solve the problem. So the um, the size of, of uh, administrative um, institutions sometimes impedes the or pre prevents the, the possibility of really being agile in the uh, management of these things. I mean, in the Ministry of Culture in um, uh, the King's Square, the web page is not uh, updated. I mean, so I think that it is not their fault in the sense that they have a lot of work associated with their uh, competences. But there should be a more vertical uh, contact with the citizens and not always through the uh, regional national governments, uh, European government, etc. There should be a more direct and vertical um, contact. Although the state has to be in the final analysis, the one that has to manage the good which is located in it. Good morning. First of all, uh, apart from my ignorance on the topic, and this will show in my comments, the European label has to start by the local administration, then the uh, regional, then the national, and then a report is made through the world tourism. No, is the European Heritage Council. There are certain criteria that one has to meet, and those criteria are not always the same, depending on the country. My question has to do with the fact that there is also a European heritage label of intangible uh, label, the same as there is the uh, cultural interest site. I think there is another one of a European uh, scale where it is. Uh, it, it, it is intangible thing. Well, the intangible is a potential recognizable good. And although they are identified with a paper, they are intangibles. For example, the abolition of the death penalty in Portugal is a paper, or the Westphalia peace is a paper. 
it is in, in a way intangible. But in the sense that you mention it, what we theoretically consider as intangible, there's nothing recognized in the European Heritage uh, label. There's the same applies to the natural or environmental goods. Uh, well, this has been uh, started only three years ago, but the in intangible is not still eligible. Last interventions, please. Good morning. When Miguel Angel made his comments and you also suggested it, could you insist a bit upon the work plan in the recognition of the European Heritage Label, particularly to uh, avoid the uh, trademark call? Because there is, I get my medal, I trust that the procedure will not throw me away if I do not fulfill the criteria, and automatically I make it a product of a touristic nature, forgetting immediately what I have to do or the final goal of that uh, label. So if you could perhaps elaborate a bit on the work plan as a fundamental piece, not just for getting the recognition, but also to control the follow-up and development. The question uh, is that when we are uh, with the spaces, sites uh, that have the uh, heritage um, label, for example, the crown of Aragon Archive has a functioning um, activity. What, what is important is to have a work plan to visualize the wealth of that archive. They have conference cycles, guided visits, uh, cinema projections, etc. There is where the uh, activities related to the label um, also are linked, so they can visualize quite easily that. If we go to Finisterre, which is something that touches probably your uh, region, it is more complicated because activity has to fall on a very small municipality, on a natural space that will depend of the uh, region of Galicia, where different administrations um, touch. and. Uh, the beginning should be to create an institutional building with a, with, a, with an institutional space of the European Heritage Label. Then at, uh, receiving the public in different uh, languages, youngsters, etc. So it is quite complicated for a small community of a, where, where the uh, Cape is located to carry out that huge work. So it is going to be difficult for them. That is why uh, I say that universities, where there are human resources, where there is management uh, capacity, where there should be only a small finance, a small funding. I don't want that my research group receives a million uh, euro. It would be great, but I mean, I prefer to get 50,000, but every year on a regular basis so that I can carry out a long-term project. A, a, a million maybe, you know, uh, fireworks, but but you don't have enough um, capacity to manage it. But the logical thing would be small amounts that would allow uh, a long-term project. If the University of Santiago or Coruña would decide to manage the Cape of Finisterre, would do it probably much better with a small uh, financial um, level, but with greater impact for the citizens which would allow the Finisterre, Finisterre Cape to get the European label, the heritage label. Mm -hmm. Last intervention. There's no mic. This is uh, really a uh, terrible um, mixed up. I mean, you, you get you, you, you get into uh, the mud and uh, you, 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 you really mixed up things. One can see the lobby of the Eastern countries, as you have said, with their 
mental confusion where they consider that their last suffer sufferings for the fight of uh, freedoms are the best uh, reasons. One shouldn't show all the wounds, but to see what the integration has to do. There is a certain masochism here where the European culture after 2004, you make an announcement of the suffering under the pressure of Stalin. It's good to say it once, but not to uh, recreate on that because we mix up uh, suffering with p paintings, with architecture, etc. What there is is a confusion, and the first thing we should ask for, and this shows what we were saying yesterday, that Europe, since it doesn't have competences, doesn't have that clear what heritage, historical heritage is, is they're mixing history with memory. Themes that should be vindicated, a clear um, ideological bias, and this is a lobby, not of a group of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, but uh, ideological lobbies too, which have enormous uh, importance because they make majorities in the council. I don't know how to think about it, but there should be a, a petition of clarification of the goals of the label, because otherwise it's going to be irrelevant. It's going to be just another medal. It has lost the value of its contribution to the heritage. It is last in the, in the museums where, it's, where the object is, not, is to preserve things uh, and, and their heritage and not simply to show it to a few kids every day. We could perhaps ask, perhaps with the University of Granada, to, for clarification of the goals. Before going into the market, we have already spoiled it. If we would make a list of the places that were in the intergovernmental uh, phase are more interesting than the 29 that are now, with an added element, the meeting in Brussels, where they meet how many medals are to be distributed among each country. To have that in the agenda is something that makes crystal clear that they have nothing clear themselves. It is quite as strong to say it this way, but perhaps uh, uh, there shouldn't be those many medals, and some medals should be removed, and really to manage heritage. I will never forget when they did the big monuments of the world. where Alhambra uh, participated and there was the the uh, sacre of Rio de Janeiro which aesthetically is horrible and I remember the uh, mayor of Athens said that the Acropolis of Athens said we don't want to participate because it is sufficiently recognized to enter into that pantomime which was uh, an, in, an individual initiative by a rich Swiss um, so there was a competition of uh, signatures in the parliament so that it would become a marvel of the world. Alhambra doesn't need any other medal. We know what it is. So we should perhaps remove medals and to really devote ourselves to really manage within the possibilities of each site with support and uh, clairvoyance of the uh, persons responsible for it. Otherwise, this is a waste of time and uh, unnecessary things that require administration uh, which is really uh, impossible for the administration because they don't have the time uh, to handle these things. Thank you. Now we will give the floor to Franz the Ritter.